Welcome to my updated camper van tour video. This is the real life version. We are in the middle of using it on a actual camper van trip here near the ocean in New Zealand. So I apologize if there's some wind noise and distant waves or kids playing in the background. But uh, this is a real life look at what it is to live in a 1995 Toyota Estima Emina this is the X model that came with some industry, or I should say some factory upgrades. And just wanted to give a quick overview look of the whole vehicle. It does have its dents and dings, but it's in quite good condition considering this is January 2022 and it started its life in 1995. So it's also got a lot of ocean spray on it because last night we did park, not in this location, but this close to the ocean. Actually, no, we were closer to the ocean. The waves were crashing and it got sea spray all night long. So we've already slept in it one night. So I thought I'd give an actual tour. Go ahead and open everything up so we can see what's happening. Let's start in the cab. Um, of course, you got passenger seat and driver's seat and there's a lot of storage in here. First of all, you got the cup holders that are still functional, which is quite rare to find in these older van models. I mean, it still slides in and out. Um, what is hard to see down here, let's see, can I angle it up? I do have an upgraded Bluetooth radio in here that I had professionally installed. Um, it also has um, USB, Oops, can I see it? There it is, USB and headphone jack. So you can plug those in if you need to or you can do Bluetooth, and it um, integrates with Pandora and Spotify. There's also a bit of storage here. Um, I've only used it either for phones or for a rock that I put essential oils on, if you want the van to smell extra nice. Although I will say it doesn't really have any um, smells like most older vans do. It doesn't smell like mold or mildew or anything weird. This is our little snack area. But as you can see, this is quite a deep storage space. What is actually hiding back here is an entire pack of binoculars. So that storage goes real deep back in there. And then secret storage, this thing right here, has even more stuff. Keep the first aid kit, some extra napkins, um, the essential oils and that. This goes deep. This goes all the way down to here. And there's another secret hidden storage back in here. We don't actually use it for anything, but it is amazing all the secret storage spaces that are in here, that one and that one, and just that it's so big you can fit an entire thing of binoculars plus snacks. Handy spot for snacks. The other storage you got here is your classic glove box, and in here fits an umbrella. It's a fairly big glove box. Of course, face masks in this COVID era. Um, you know, car tools, flashlight, actually goes back fairly deep in there. So pretty substantial sized glove box. I also keep a fuse tester and some spare fuses because that's handy in an old van. Um, that being said, all the um, exterior light, or I'm sorry, interior lights, the clock, of course um, the ignition is not turned on right now, but the clock works, the dash works. All the lights work because I've kept up with the fuses and keep that spare tester in there. Um, everything here also still works except for the actual air conditioning. I've been told that it could be potentially recharged um, with an air conditioning recharge, but I've never attempted to do that because I lived on the South Island of New Zealand and it never actually got hot enough to really need air conditioning. Um, one interesting thing about this van, it comes with the mirror built in here, but it didn't come with the mirror built in on this side, so I added my own. So you do have a um, driver's side mirror. There is also um, a sunroof and a moonroof in this vehicle. Um, so this one pops up and the one in the back slides back. You'll see there's um, air vents on this side, and the other side of this unit has air vents that blow out into the back as well. And all of that is functional too. Down here in the cockpit area, I keep my purse, tissues, a uh, spare roll of paper towels, 
and a pop-up um, trash and also the um, sunshade slides right out which is also very good for keeping things nice and cool and private when you are sleeping in the van. Go over to the other side just to show you what that looks like and a couple features on this side too. Here in the cockpit for the driver's side here's your dash. Um, up here is where I normally store the phone. It's really sturdy and um, can charge it at the same time. It has the official self-contained sticker, but the certification is expired. I just haven't found a need to renew. Also in the back you have the rear wiper, and there was a backup mirror here, but that fell off the first day I owned it, and I prefer not having it because I think it looked ugly and blocked your rear view. So in the back here, um, what is laying here is actually the window shade for that window, but I haven't been able to get the suction cups to stay. My old one stayed for years, and then I bought this new one, and I can't get it to stay up. You have your built-in sink here with a drain, and that drain goes down into a gray water tank in the back, and there is a fresh water tank in the front. These are both 25 liter cubes. And um, so, and this has the vent for the gray water, but I don't know, that was something that was required in New Zealand and don't use it. Um, or I guess it uses itself, but it never smells, so I don't know why you need a vent. Um, because those are so um, hard to get in and out, I have this spare 10 liter jug, and this is handy because, let's see if I can do it left handed. It's not, uh, nope. So I put that up here, and then you can run the water in and it all drains away, no leaks. And um, you can take this jug and put it on a picnic table and wash your hands or do your dishes off of a picnic table and take this bin here and make that your catch basin if you're doing anything dirty that you don't want to contaminate the environment. And I also have a mini dish rack that fits in here and I didn't bring it on this trip, but it comes out and you know you, then you could dry your dishes out in the sun somewhere. Um, of course, you got your soaps there. In here, you can put whatever you need for, you know, knives, cutting things, um, matches for lighting the fire and such. Um, I keep one bin for all of my um, silverware and one bin for all of my spices and a spare lantern. In this one, I keep all of my towels and dish stopper and rubber gloves in there in case you need to stop a drain at a campsite. I also got tissues, which is also good for cleaning up last minute things, and the gas can and stove, which inside here is this metal contraption that screws on top of here. And then you can take this and cook wherever you want, say on a picnic table, or sometimes I just take this cooler and put this on the ground here and cook there. Or if it's raining and you want the cover of the roof, then um, you can even just cook right here or pull this out, move this, and put it on there and cook on this spot. So you have lots of options really with how mobile the cooking is and how mobile the dish pan and water can are. And um, that makes it really nice and easy in case you don't really want all your water going into the gray water system here. Um, to be able to take that pan to a campsite and to dump it somewhere. Now, in addition to this cooler, or as they call in New Zealand, the chili bin, um, in the back is where all the other kitchen stuff is stored. Um, and sometimes, too, um, this is really nice metal, or not metal, <laughs> silicone. So you put the silicone anywhere like up here that you don't want hot stuff to seep through. Um, and the cutting board that's underneath it, sometimes I just put that right here and see that's another cooking or chopping surface that's also just like right at the correct height for that sort of activity. And inside this bin is like your mixing utensils and um, measuring cups, storage bins, um, grilling stuff. All of those utensil type things are in that one. And then let's see one handed with this modular, nope, not quite, only two hands. Put that down on the cooler. 
and then you can get into your second one that has the dishes, the cups, the wine glasses, the pots, the pans, the lids, the um, strainer. So all that extra stuff is in here. And generally there's not anything that you can't end up cooking out here. Um, it's been quite amazing, the gourmet meals I've been able to cook while being out here in nature in beautiful locations like this one which here we are at a place called Lake Ferry and as I put the van back together um, what is out there is um, a mountain range that separates this area from the Wellington area and um, this is an inlet from the ocean and it's kind of blocked off by that narrow strip of land you can see on the horizon there now this is hard to do with one hand so get the second hand in there and everything fits like Tetris so you really just got to make sure everything goes back in um, I'll leave everything else to put away later when we're not videoing but on the side here we've got jumper cables um, some stuff to um, brighten up your headlamps there's the car jack the uh, I don't know, wrench thing for doing the lug nuts, um, a folder with all the papers of all the cars, a gold pan because this is New Zealand and you can do that there. There's also a shovel back in there and there's um, your ratchet tie for loosening the, the strap on this so you can take those two things out. And on this side we've got uh, grocery stuff, your grocery bag, a fruit bag, and a spare uh, tube for your sink because I did have to replace that once. Also over here, you got another one of these, which is real handy. You can put this out while you're cooking and leave it open so you can drop stuff in. Um, this is the food bin. So in here is another one, and also paper towels. Super handy to have those. But food bin um, goes back fairly far. Lots of, you know, dried food, soup, um, oil and vinegar and granola bars and plastic wrap and bags and all that kind of stuff so that's the pantry and when we're done we'll put it all back together so that's your cooking station it's really quite nice and you got your cover there and then here's your sleeping station and um, over here I keep my toiletry bag and handy dandy rolls of toilet paper and other things in case you need a quick dash to the bathroom and the outdoor bathroom doesn't have one, they usually do. Uh, also got two camping chairs. This is a screen for the moon roof that has magnets on it so it stays down. That's the end of the um, sunshade. I have two old yoga mats. Um, for either doing yoga or just having some cushion when you want to be on a beach. Um, this is just a bag full of shoes and another bag full of shoes. And then under here is a lot of storage space. So here you've got like a carry-on sized suitcase that fit in there. Um, we also fit a backpack here on top of this. This is a solar shower. So you put this out in the sun and then this little nozzle here gives you a shower when you hang it up. Gravity makes the water come out. In the back you got a pail for cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, a little box that comes out with the clothespins. In this empty space back there, I used to have one of those portable chemical toilets for the porta potty. Got rid of those. Here we've got uh, two bins. One has car tools, one has dirty laundry, clean laundry and a laptop and hat and jacket and other supplies. So you can have two people's worth of stuff for um, long-term living, really, as long as the two of you can live out of the equivalent of one suitcase each, plus your toiletry bags on the side. I'll um, fix that up later. Well, the bed part does convert into a couch, but almost no one I know ever converts their bed into a couch. I did it a couple times when it was raining um, and I wanted to be on the inside. Probably one of my favorite features is the giant moonroof. And like I said, I've got the magnetic screen so you can put the glass back. And last night we did sleep under the stars right next to the ocean. It was amazing. 
I do have a USB fan, and what do you plug the USB cord into to power it is a power bank like you would use for your phone, USB power bank. Um, over here I have a little dangling um, removable carabiner bucket that stores like my bedside table stuff, like earplugs, chapstick, etc. Um, got a sleeping mask there, got some side pillows that do help, um, mostly on insulation I would say really helps um, keep the heat or sun that's coming from the windows and the walls from getting into the bed area, as do these curtains. You see I've got a curtain there that goes across this track here. Um, this curtain expands in both directions there. There's the back curtain and here's the side curtain. And now this curtain fabric is thermal blackout curtain fabric. So this uh, white stuff blocks all light from coming through and it does create a bit of a thermal barrier and you can feel it when the sun hits the window in the morning it is hotter on the other side of the curtain than it is on the inside of the curtain um, and up top i've got uh, three bungee cords which connect on both sides and these form both a way to store like my pajamas so that when i'm laying here I can easily just reach up, grab the pajamas and put them on, and I do the same thing with the fresh clothes in the morning. You can also, of course, use it as a drying rack to dry like wet towels from the beach or a shower. Um, same thing with this driftwood rack over here. You can hang various stuff. You also see running along there, I've got um, fairy lights, and that runs all the way around this and connects to this little switch here that turns them on. So the fairy lights run all along and the switch turns them off. They're just like watch battery powered. So that's pretty cool. And um, over here on this, this is also handy to switch on and off and create some light at night. It has white with two brightnesses and red with two brightnesses. It doesn't flash, that's just on camera. It looks like it's flashing because of the light frequency. Um, there's an extra light here that actually comes off and can be you know, put anywhere that you need to see at night, like underneath there or whatever. Um, and the handy hand sanitizer, which these things both flip around to the front. So when you're sleeping, they don't bother you. Or when someone's sitting in the passenger seat, it doesn't bother them. And I think that might pretty much conclude the features of the van, except for when it converts into a couch. To do that, you, um, this mattress, is split in half. So one half goes up against the windows as the back of the couch, and then this um, forward half slides back. And then this piece of wood here is not connected. So it forms kind of like um, an L shape, except that there's no cushion to cover this part of the L. And that's fine, because I usually end up putting like a laptop there or something, it becomes like a side table. Um, and speaking of side tables, there is this ledge back here but whoever originally built it didn't build it very well and so it it doesn't stay up even when I put it back so just never use that for anything and I've really never had a need to um, but I think that probably sums up all the things that this van does I just want to point out my doge pillow he's my van dog love him um, just give you a quick overview so you can see what it looks like from the inside and that is your little slice of New Zealand camper van life basically kind of sums it up right there cooking and sleeping right by the ocean hope you enjoyed